Hey everyone, good morning and welcome back to Daily Crypto News. It's May 27th, Monday. I'm your host, Sarah. You know what would be good for your Monday? Check out our Twitter for a weekly roundup. DM us at Substack for what kinds of news you would like to hear this week. All right, let's get started. With the approval of Ether, Spot, ETF, the crypto community is buzzing with speculation about which digital asset might be the next. Experts have varied opinions on the likely candidates, with assets like Solana, Dogecoin, XRP, and Litecoin emerging as frontrunners. Some people say that Solana has the best chance since it reacts best with the boom with Ethereum. Others say Dogecoin or Litecoin have better chances. They have their own reasons. Reasons, but the role of futures market seems to be also crucial in this discussion. The Commodity Futures Trading Commission CFTC in the States regulates the futures market for Bitcoin and Ethereum, which helped pave the way for their ETFs. Another factor experts are looking at is the legal status of XRP. James Seifat Research Analyst at Bloomberg Intelligence mentioned that the outcome of the ongoing lawsuit against XRP could influence its chances. What do you guys think? Which asset will be the next asset for the spot ETF? I would love to know. Sarah at dailycryptonews.net. Have you heard of this term, low float, high FTV tokens? This term has been much mentioned in the crypto Twitter space. I think you've already seen multiple times, I'm sure of it. And this came from a Binance report on tokens with high fully diluted values and low initial circulating supplies, also known as low float high FTV coins. On Monday, Binance also responded to concerns about the growing trend by announcing a strategic shift towards listing small to medium sized projects. The reason for the controversy is that low float high FTV tokens often leave little upside for traders after the token generation event, aka TGE. Analysts differ on why the price of these tokens has dropped in recent months, with some pointing to VCs and others pointing to market conditions. Meanwhile, there is no agreement on a solution on how to distribute tokens whose value doesn't go down immediately. I believe that you've also experienced somewhat similar uh, vibe on the low float high FTB tokens. As long as the TGE happens, it's not that bad. But the issue is that most of the time before TGE, the value is set very high and inflated that kind of retail market participants don't really stand a chance anyways. Swiss Borg researcher, the Twitter account Trade the Flow ignited the wider discussion by posting on his Twitter account and said, yes, more often than not, tokens launching on Binance are not investment vehicle anymore. All their upside potentials are already taken away. In a Substack post published on Sunday, Jordan Fish, aka Kobe, wrote also that most of the upside for new tokens is now captured privately before they even exist, I guess before they even have the chance of TGE, leading to inflated valuations, little for public market participants and even phantom markets where investors with locked tokens sell their tokens at massive discounts to the public price, indicating a dislocation between the public and private markets. We have one article in the previous Previous episode that I shared about more and more VCs prefer not to disclose their valuation and investment amounts on new projects. So public market participants like us or retail investors really don't stand a chance even after TGE happens. Followed by these massive discussions, a lot of people also try to share some possible solutions. There are four different solutions or potential solutions that people can try, but these solutions are still um, potential solutions. It's a solution ideas. But anyways, let's see. There are four different solutions that could be possibly a solution. One, bring back ICO. Number two, unlock 100% of the token immediately or according to price or time-based metric. 
Number three, list tokens at lower prices. Right now, we're putting the token price when the listing happens too high, so it happens to be a dumping ground. Number four, change of VCs mindsets. Of course, this can be very hard to change, but you can see that possible solutions have to happen with. The whole change of mindset in the industry, but also at the same time, market participants have to act as well. What do you think? Do you have any experience in this kind of situation? I believe you have. I have. Anyways, this low float, high FTV tokens became a narrative as well, where a lot of projects started to promote themselves as non. Low float, high FTV tokens. What do you guys think? I would love to know what kind of metrics you have in terms of investing into these early pre-TGE tokens. Sarah at DailyCryptoNews.net. As crypto and digital assets become more widely adopted, the transparency that exists in public blockchains become more problematic. The pearls of doxing that now exists in terms of personally identifiable information will start to extend to personal financial information as well, leaving many vulnerable to bad actors. I've been reading this article about. Private blockchain stablecoins, and I think it speaks to me in the way that pointing out the problems that we have, but also the solution for the problem too. I mean, at the end of the day, stablecoin is the best use case of cryptocurrency, so we gotta keep an eye on that, right? No matter how much we trust on on-chain system, on-chain commerce will never fully take off without the same level of privacy that exists in traditional finance. Because most users, let's be honest, accept the same level of privacy and ease, the conveniency of it, that we get with the current banking app, investment app. On our smartphone. That's why private stablecoins are the absolute bedrock of any Web3 analog for commerce use cases. There are many benefits to this, and this article point out four different benefits. First, it can eliminate the need for expensive custodian through built-in security and anonymization features. Number two, it can provide competitive security and protection against espionage by. Obscuring transaction trails for, for stablecoin and securing sensitive business operations. Number three, it can also mask financial details of employees to prevent reverse engineering of payroll data when salaries are distributed using stablecoins. Number four, it can program regulatory compliance into stablecoins in such a way that they are tailored into meeting legal standards. This article is actually quite heavy, but it's easy to read, and I love the articles from blog works like this. So, I highly, highly recommend for you to read if you have time. According to an independent examiner appointed by the court overseeing FTX bankruptcy, before its collapse in November 2022, crypto exchange FTX paid seven whistleblowers a combined $25 million to settle complaints alleging systematic improperties. Among other things, the whistleblowers alleged market manipulation, inside trading, co-mingling customer and company funds, and flouting regulations and anti-money laundering measures. The examiner, former prosecutor Robert Cleary, made almost 300-page report public on last Thursday. However, to date, we all know founder and former CEO Sam Bankman-Fried is the only one has been jailed in connection with the multi-billion-dollar fraud that led to the exchange's collapse. This is a very juicy story. I wouldn't comment on it right now, but I will keep an eye on this report and how it kind of expands. The Layer One blockchain platform Aptis. Developed by formal Facebook employees, has achieved a new milestone in blockchain transactions. It surpassed Solana by recording 115.4 million transactions in a single day on May 25th, compared to Solana's 31.7 million. 
According to Aptoscan, the blockchain's user TPS transactions per second also reached an all-time high of 32,000 on the same day. It's actually a pretty high number. If you see newly made layer 1 blockchains, they kind of promote their TPS to be 10,000 or even 20,000, and it's supposed to be very, very high. And the more interesting thing about this milestone is that despite the high volume of transactions, Aptos has maintained consistent gas fees and success rates, right? Impressive. It seems like this recent surge in transactional activity on Aptos is attributed to the launch of a project called Tapus Cat, a new tap to earn game that has gained rapid popularity. You just have to tap a cat in that game. I guess that is fun. <laughs> Anyways, the Aptos governance token, token ticker APT, is priced at $9.18 according to the market cap. I believe that Korean people really, really love this Aptos and they are community led, which is very healthy. But that's a story for another time. That's all for today. Now let's see how the markets are doing. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. In the fear and greed index, we are staying around 74. We're so greedy and the price is going very well. People are expecting the Bitcoin to be 70K very soon. And if we're going to coin market cap and now is 6 a.m. EST at the time of my recording. And if you see the price of major cryptocurrency in number one, Bitcoin, it's staying at 68,560. 67.94 dollars and it's 0.66 percent down since yesterday and number two ethereum 3913.36 dollars three percent up since yesterday number three maker 2811.13 dollar 0.27 percent down since yesterday number four bnb 602.22 dollars and 0.13 percent up since yesterday number five bitcoin cash 485.62 dollars 0.83 percent down since yesterday number six bittensor 428.52 dollars 2.61 percent up since yesterday number seven gnosis 360.22 dollars 3.24 percent down since yesterday number eight solana 165.39 dollars 1.36% up since yesterday. Number 9, Monero, 141.78 dollars, 0.08% up since yesterday. Number 10, Ave, 110.47 dollars, 5.22% up since yesterday. In terms of chart in the last 7 days, I would recommend to go for Solana. <laughs> because it has been going down for the last seven days i think that it might be a dip anyways thank you for tuning in today as well hope you learned something with me at daily crypto news we have met tomorrow on tuesday share your feedback opinion dj news to our email sarah at daily crypto news.net or met at daily crypto news.net as well we have been trying different things on twitter we have different articles so if you are hanging out on twitter our dms are open comments are open make sure to share anytime until tomorrow Happy hodling, everyone.